Hi, I'm KB. Are you sure all the fans in your computer are spinning as they should right now? And what happens if one of them dies or gets disconnected without you noticing? Today we're going to take another look at monitoring computer fans. This video is part two of a series. In the first part, I configured monitoring and alerts for the case where a single fan is connected directly to a fan header. I recommend you take a look at that video as well. I'll put a link to it on the screen. When you have several fans that share a job, like taking care of the airflow through a case or cooling a radiator used for water cooling, and one of them fails, the still working fans would have to spin faster to maintain proper cooling. And that would increase the noise produced by your computer. I'm going to show how you can set up monitoring and notifications in AquaSuite from AquaComputer. If you have another fan controller, you should be able to use the same principle provided that your fan controller supports the same capabilities as AquaSuite. This video is not sponsored by anyone. I've paid for all the products I'm using and showing myself. Computer fans have a dedicated wire in the cable that sends back a tachometer signal, also known as an RPM signal, to the fan controller. In the first video, we use that signal to monitor the health of the fan. But if you have multiple fans connected to a fan hub, or a splitter cable like this one. That approach will not work. If we take a closer look at my splitter cable, we can see that all the wires are connected on this one, all four, but on the other connector, the RPM wire is missing. Why is that? Why not simply connect all the wires? That is because the signal is a simple electrical square wave and the frequency of this wave indicates the fan RPM. If multiple fans send their signal on the same wire, that waveform would get distorted and the fan controller would be unable to measure the frequency. It's simply not designed to work with multiple fans. Let's take a look at my PC. I have four sets of fan in my computer. In the first video, we took care of the back fan, which is connected directly to a fan header. The rest of the fans are grouped with splitter cables and connected to three fan headers. The two fans at the top are paired and the two fans behind my side radiator are paired as well. And I have a three-way splitter for the fans on my bottom radiator. When we can't use the tachometer signal to monitor all the fans, we have to come up with another approach. We are going to monitor the electrical current drawn by the fans instead. So we are going to need a fan controller that measures the current draw. Luckily, the Aqua computer controllers I use can do this. We can use the fact that if a fan gets disconnected, it'll draw zero amps. And if it gets stuck, it will draw more current in order to try to start and maintain the RPM set by the fan controller. But the current draw will of course also change depending on how hard the fans are working. So we are going to try to establish a baseline of the current draw as a function of the speed of the fans. Then we can raise an alarm if the actual current draw deviates from our expected value. I'll take measurements at different fan speeds and hopefully we'll see a clear relation between the RPM and the current draw. I will work on the three fans on my bottom radiator. Let's go into AquaSuite. First we need to check that our fans are free to go from 0 to 100%. My fans are controlled by the AquaEra. It's a button fan. Make sure that there are no minimum or maximum limits set. So I'll clear mine here. Minimum of 0% and maximum 100. And we don't want to hold minimum power. Now the fan is free to go from 0 to 100%. Next we'll set up a preset controller so we can easily control the fan speed. I'll add a new controller and it's a preset value. The output is the fan we want to control. So now I can easily set the fan speed directly here. AquaSuite outputs the current in amps with only two decimal places. So to get a more precise value, we need to convert the value to milliamps. I'll make a very simple sensor in the playground that multiplies the value by 1000. 
add a new sensor and it's current in milliamps. And for the data source, I'll select the fan we are measuring. Button fan and the current. So, and we, multi we want to multiply that. That's a function, multiplication. And we need a constant to multiply. 1000 milliamps per amp. Like so. Now let's make a spreadsheet for our measurements. I use Google Sheet, but you can use any spreadsheet program that you like. We need a column for the power. That's how fast the fan controller is telling the fan to spin in percent. And a column for the current. Measured in milliamps. And I'll take measurements in steps of 10% points, starting with 10. Uh, one more. So I'm going to fill out the sheet. Let's start to set the fan speed to 10%. And Look at the output for from our software sensor. Wait for it to stabilize. It looks like eight milliamps. Raise the speed to twenty percent. Wait for the current to stabilize again. It looks like thirteen milliamps. Go up to 30%. 21, 22, seem, let's say 20, 21, seems to be the stable value here. And I've just skipped to the last one. Set controller to 100%. And we get 140 milliamps. Let's zoom in a little bit here. So now we'll add a graph for our measurements. And we need a trend line. We see here that the line is not a very good fit for our measurements. An exponential curve looks better, but not perfect. Polynomial, now that's very good. That's very close to our line. I want to show the equation for that polynomial. This is a polynomial of degree 2, also known as a quadratic equation. It has the general form y equals ax squared plus bx plus c, where y is a current drawn and x is the power the fan controller sets. a, b and c are constants and the spreadsheet finds the values to make the best fit. Have you ever asked your math teacher, when will I ever use that quadratic equation in real life? Well, that's one item off your bucket list. Oh, and don't just copy the values I found. They will only work for these particular fans. 
Let's calculate the expected current draw from our quadratic equation for each of the power values. Zero point zero one four eight times our power raised raise to the power of two minus zero point one eight nine times our power plus ten point two. Then we can see how much the measured values deviates from the calculated expected values in percent. Let's add that calculation. So we have the difference between the two. By the current and we can just get value in percent. So we can see that uh, they are all within twenty two percent. So let's add a safety margin and assume that it's safe to say that a fan has failed if the measured value is more than 25% off compared to the predicted value. First, we're going to implement the equation into AquaSuite to calculate the expected value. We'll make a new virtual software sensor. I'll call it bottom fan calculated current. And the unit is milliamps. And we're going to need our three constants. A, which were 0 0.0148. Sorry. And B. Minus zero point one eight nine and C ten point two. And the X value for our data source. Is a fan power so the equation was eight times x squared. Unfortunately, Equus we don't have a square function, but It'll just multiply the power by itself. So that's x squared. Multiply that with the constant a. So this is a times x squared. And we got the B plus B times X. X is still the power. B and 
and multiply those. Sorry. Make it addition. But this is ax squared bx and plus c. So this is our calculated value for the current, just connected to the output. Next, we are going to make another virtual software sensor that compares the expected current draw with the measured value and output one, that's a Boolean true, if they differ more than 25%. So we'll add another virtual software sensor. I will call it bottom fan failed. The output is a Boolean value, true or false, so I'll just keep the unit blank. And we're going to need our calculated current as a data source. That's in milliamps. I select our virtual sensor. Like so, and we need to compare it to the actual measured current. So I'll add that as a data source as well. But that one is in amps, so we need to convert that to milliamps as well. Just multiply by a thousand. Function multiplication. So now we have the two currents and we'll calculate the difference of delta. Just do a subtraction. Sometimes that value is negative, sometimes it's positive, depending on if the measured current is above or below our calculated one. We are only interested in the positive or absolute value. Unfortunately, of course we don't have an absolute function, so we have to calculate the absolute value ourselves, just multiply by minus one to get the other value. So now we have a positive and a negative value and we pick the larger of the two maximum. So this, this one is always positive. Then we need to calculate how much it deviates from the calculated current. Just make a division.
I'm running out of space here. Cut out calculate. Current and our delta. Oops. That's the other way around. Like so. So that's about 5% difference. This one is in, it's a decimal fraction. And we saw before that we had a trace hole about 25%. If the deviation is above that, we are sure that a fan has failed. So I'll make a check for that. Trace hole here. 0 0.25. Let's call that error. Error trace hole. And we need a logic function to see if it's greater. Is that value greater than the threshold? No, it's not at the moment, so the fan is good. We could output this value from our sensor, but when the power is very low, it gets a little uncertain and the deviation gets very big if for very small values of power. So I'll add a check to only output a fail fan if the power is actually above 20%. My fan stops at around 12%. So I only want to do this if it is above 20%. Greater than, it's a logic function. So I need the fan power. So this one is true if the fan power is above or equal to 20% and we'll do the check. If it's below, we'll just assume that the fan is okay. If we multiply apply those two together, like so, then if both values are 1, we output that the bottom fan has failed, meaning that yes, we should monitor and yes, it is failed here. If it's below, if it's 0%, we might get that it has failed, but it's below the monitoring level and we'll still output 0 or false. Finally, we'll connect this sensor to the notification we set up in the first part of this video series. We go to our notification, it's here, and we need to add 
our new data source. That we just built. We just make a logic or so if either of the fans that we monitor has failed, the back fan or one of the button fans. This one will trigger the notification. And I also add our new data source to the output. Then if the notification triggers, I can see which one is true, so it gets a little bit easier to find the fail fan. I'll put my finger on the line and stick it in one of the fans to stop it. If all goes as expected, we'll see a race in the amps drawn and the notification popping up on my desktop. Another success. My finger survived unharmed and we got the alert we wanted. We'll have to go through the same measurements for the other fan groups and find the fitting quadratic equation for them and set up additional virtual software sensors to monitor all the fans. If you have other crazy ideas of what we can implement, let me know in the comments and please remember to click the subscribe button. Until next time, be happy and have fun. <laughs>